hi guys my name is Danielle I own the shop farmhouse felts on Etsy and this video I wanted to show you how I make tiny hands for my needle felted animals so this guy right here he's gonna end up being a mouse and here's a tiny little hand I'm gonna show you how I how I do this so real quick I want to go over the steps of what's gonna happen here and how we're gonna make this tiny hand so what you're going to need to do is you're going to take a piece of cloth covered floral wire and we are going to wrap the wire in the wool before we make it into the shape of our hand and the reason why i wanted to try it this way is because and anybody who's ever tried making needle felted animals with tiny um, armature hands uh, knows that when you try to make the tiny hand and then wrap it in the wool sometimes it can be a little difficult to get hands that are small especially the fingers people can have and i've definitely had trouble making tiny little fingers because you're working very small um, and it's very easy to use a little too much wool and end up with something that looks more like a mitten than a, than a tiny little mouse hand. So I thought if I wrapped the wire first in the wool, not only would I have fingers that are all consistently the same size, um, and I could end up with a hand that would not end up having too much wool on it. So to do this, I needed to make a mixture of wax, uh, beeswax, raw beeswax, and oil. I cut it with oil so I could make this putty to coat the wire in to get the wool to stick to it. Um, basically here I have a mug warmer. I got it off Amazon, it's like $30. I take these little disposable cupcake tins and I take a little bit of the coconut oil but again you don't have to use coconut oil I read online I was reading online what um, makes beeswax more pliable if you're using it for sculpting and people said that cutting it with oil um, is one of the best ways so uh, somebody said coconut oil works well somebody else said olive oil works okay too and you can also even use almond oil you could try and play around I liked this the best though I found this in the supermarket it almost looks like Vaseline a little bit and I take a little bit of that I take a couple of, of my beeswax pellets I use um, beeswax in pellet form and I mix them together the exact ratio honestly I, I, I can't tell you I don't know um, I use more beeswax than oil because I still want the be I still want the the mixture to have a, that sticky uh, consistency but I just want it to be a little pliable so I can work with it so what I do is I have it mixing here I mix them together I let them melt in and once it's all mixed and it's all melted I take it off the heat and I and I let it I let it dry and I let it solid up And when it solids up, it looks something like this. It ends up almost looking like, like a putty. <clears throat> so here, this is the coconut oil and the beeswax mixed together and dried. And you can see I can, I can mold it in between my fingers. It's still very sticky. So I thought it worked great to coat the wire in to get the wool to stick to it. So that's that's what we're gonna do and then you're gonna coat the wire in this this wax oil mixture um, you can cut the wire in half you don't need the entire length of wire to make one hand and then you could use the other length to make the other hand so fold it evenly in half cut it in the middle and take your little wax little wax ball here and coat the wire I like to give it a nice nice good coating even if you have little little pieces little chunks of, of the of the wax mixture on there that's good too because you really want to get that wool to stick to it do a couple passes I like to fold the wax around the wire like this and just pull it through all 
All right, so now we have our piece of wire and it's nice and sticky. So then you want to take your wool, whatever color hand, um, whatever animal you're going to be making, you want to choose that color wool. So I'm making a mouse. I like to, I chose like a nude peachy pink color for his hand. And you do not need a big piece of wool to do this. Very thin, small piece. You can draft it out because you want it nice and thin. We don't want to put a big thick layer of wool on the wire. We want a nice thin layer of wool just to color. You're basically just trying to color the wire into the color of the hand. So it's easy if you start at the bottom when you're gonna when you're gonna wrap the the wire in the wool. So I like to start at the bottom. I hold the wool in one hand, wire in the other hand, start twisting it to get the wool on there. And because it has that sticky wax mixture on there, it's it sticks pretty good. So I just start twisting. Start twisting the wool onto the wire. Keep it nice and taut. Because you want a nice thin layer of wool on your wire. You don't want it too thick. And you want to try to keep it pretty consistent so you get fingers that are all consistently the same size. You don't want to have too much wool here and then a very thin amount here because then it's going to defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So keep it nice and tight as you're twisting it around the wire as you work your way up. If you get to a point where you have a little bit too much wool that's coming up, just draft it out. And just work your way up the wire. And get to the end just pull a little bit off the end there and just twist it on so there we have our wire with our wool on it and then what also I like to do after after you wrap it on just kind of give it another twist another twist up the wire really get that wool on there get it on there good I also like to give it one more pass with the um, with the the putty mixture we have here so I'll just rub a little bit of that on there and I'll just twist it work it in there So you should have something that looks like that. So you can see I did not put a lot of wool on there. I put a very thin amount. It's still, I mean, the wire is still pretty much the same size as it was before I even added the wool. You don't need a lot. I mean, unless you want to have an animal with real thick fingers, then you could add, you could add a good amount on there. But um, I like to make my hands with little skinny fingers because most little animals like mice and or rats, chipmunks, they have skinny little tiny hands and fingers. All right, so now we are going to start folding the wire into the shape of our hand. So what you're gonna wanna do is start about I don't know, I'd say start about like one, two, three, three and a half, four inches in and, and bend. And 
and then another inch bend right here so basically you're going to be making like the shape of a heart a nice heart shape and then bend that so you have like an M shape and then we'll make the shape of our heart like this and pinch it together what you could do is you could take a piece uh, a pair of pliers pinch it right here and pinch it all together here at the base. Then you're gonna take the shorter piece. So you should have something that looks like this. You have the bend here, the bend here kind of looks like a heart, pinch it down at the middle you get your you get two pieces of wire hanging out the bottom here you get a shorter piece and a longer piece take the shorter piece bring it in front push it through right here like that so it's like that and bring it through to the other side And try to keep at the base, keep it nice and taut, nice and kind of squished together like that. And then what you're going to do is take this long piece of wire here hanging at the bottom, bring it up and around the center. And down to the other side. And that kind of just holds it all together. You can even take your pliers again, give it a little pinch. All right. So here we have the start, the shape of our hand. So as you can see here, these are going to be our five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And that's going to be how you attach it. Now we are going to cut our, I'm going to give it a little snip to, to cut your fingers, snip there, snip there, take your pliers, straighten it out. Straighten out the, the tops. And just FYI, I did not come up <laughs> with this method of, of making an armature hand. I think it's actually quite a common method that a lot of artists who sculpt and use armature wire, modeling wire, to make hands. Um, I just thought it worked well for this because some of the other methods where you take two pieces of wire, you take two pieces of wire and kind of twist them together to make hands. It didn't really work well because I, I needed them to just end up singularly. I couldn't have two pieces of wire together because then that would be a really funny looking finger. So I just, I found this method online and I thought it, it worked perfect for what I was trying to do. Um, so here we have the start of your hand. It should look like something like a, a garden rake, really. Um, what's going to be your, your pinky and what's going to be your thumb is up to you. Um, what I recommend to do is take a look at your own hand and cut it like that. So we have the middle finger is the longest. These two are the second longest. And then you get the thumb and the pinky are the shortest. So I start by doing a little snip here. I'm actually gonna, I like my fingers a little 
shorter for my animals, but it's entirely up to you. Whatever you want your hand to look like, if you want them to have long fingers, depending on whatever animal you're trying to make, it's completely up to you. There's really no right or wrong way to make your fingers. I just like to have small little hands and fingers for my animals because I think it looks cute. Now I decided to have this one be my thumb, this one's going to be the pinky, and then we get the rest, the middle, index, and ring finger. And then what you might want to do is just, because when you cut, when you cut the wire to make the fingers, some of the wool might become a little frayed at the top. We're going to fix that all at the end and I'll show you how. Just give it a little twist to kind of keep it on there. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to, what I like to do, you don't have to do this. I like to do this to make my hand a little stronger. I take the other half of the wire of the 26 gauge wire and I wrap it around the middle here. This is just so when I attach it to the armature, when I attach it to the armature, it's stronger where the, where the wrist is because otherwise it can be a little flimsy and I just, I like to build my armature strong. I like them to be strong if people are going to handle them. So I added just another piece of wire to make it real strong around the wrist here and like the form, the forearm area. You don't have to do it, um, but I, I like to do it because I feel like it makes it a little stronger here. So I just take another piece of wire, the other half from what we cut in the beginning, and I wrap it right in the middle. I just give it like a little pinch there. And if while you're working with this, while you're making it, you know, don't be afraid to rebend it, you know, retwist the wool on. I mean, because it, it happens because you're, you're handling it so much. But then I like to twist these two pieces together here, which will probably be the bottom piece of the wire when I attach it to the arm and cut off the slack cut this piece to here we go so now you want to wrap your palm You want to wrap, take another piece of wool, small, thin piece of wool, to make the palm and the rest of the hand. I like to start with small, thin strips of wool. You know, start small, build up slowly. You want to add a little more, go ahead, add a little more. But it's better than taking like a big piece and adding it on because then you can end up with a hand that's a little too chunky. But just wrap the wrist. The wrist area. Don't wrap too far down because this still needs to be attached to your armature. You're going to wrap that after you attach it. So just, just from the bottom of the hand where the wrist area is in the palm. Just to hide that wire and to finish building off the hand. I like to go in between the fingers, kind of hold it, hold it all together.
And then you're gonna wanna felt it, felt it all down. If you missed a couple areas, you know, don't worry about it because you're going to attach it to your armature, the arm of your armature, and then you could finish putting more wool on it. It's really just to kind of get it started, really, um, wrapping it at this point. I like to take a strong ne uh, felting needle, too, when I'm, when I'm felting the hand because there's a lot of wire in there, and I feel like if I use... Um, a needle that's not as strong it can end up breaking so I like to use a, a stronger felting needle to really felt that wool in there in between the wire there's a lot of wire in there can't find a good strong one I like to just give it a couple stabs in between each finger. Felt it at an angle. But it's all right for now. Probably actually gonna make these fingers even a little shorter. They're even still a little too long for my liking. So basically the last step before um, we attach it to the armature and I really kind of wanted to try to avoid this um, with making the the oil beeswax mixture and just kind of be like one step and done your fingers are done but really what I find if you really want to finish it off and keep that wool on there so it's gonna last for a long time and it doesn't matter how many people touch these little hands after you're done making them I really think it's worth to do the extra step to dip these in just pure straight beeswax because it's so sticky and it holds the wool on there so well um, just to kind of give each fingertip a dip of, on beeswax and just just quickly twist it in twist it in just to secure that in so I have some of that melting right here on my little mug warming hot plate and I'm just gonna give a little dip you can even dip two at once, two or three at once, and just give it a little twist. You can move some of the other fingers out of the way while you do it. Just give it a little twist here. And I just, you know, I, I really, I would have loved to just avoid, <laughs> avoid this step, but I feel like it really helps hold the wool on there. Because even though that other stuff is sticky, it will eventually, it's going to unravel because it's not as sticky as beeswax. And you know what? If you don't want to bother heating up another thing of beeswax to do this, you could you even use craft glue. Um, would probably work well. Take a little dab of craft glue on, say, like a toothpick and dab it and, and work it in there. Anything that's just going to help it stick. I like using beeswax because... I'm just, I don't, probably because I'm just used to using it, but I think it works well for making little hands and needle felting. And here's the third finger I dipped. And as you can see, like, now that wool is really stuck on there good. It's really stuck on there good, and it's not going anywhere. And even after I cut these shorter, I'm, not, I'm still not even going to have to redip it because I've kind of worked that beeswax like more than three quarters way down the finger. All right, and we're going to do the last two, the thumb and the pinky. What I do is I like first... I'll, after I dip it, I kind of pinch it on there to kind of get it stuck, and then I twist. And you can kind of twist any of the excess beeswax off the finger. Do a little pinch, and twist, twist it in.
All right. Okay. So, here we go. Five little evenly wrapped fingers. So that's why I like doing that first. I like that's why I like wrapping the wire first because all these fingers are pretty much exactly the same size and it's 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 an easy way to do it and I think it works pretty well. I'm actually going to cut these fingers a little shorter. Always if you're going to resize your fingers, I recommend always starting with the middle finger cuz then you can go from there and cut the other one shorter. And then what I like to do is give them a little, a little bend for the hand. Because usually animals have kind of like that little cupped hand look when you see them in pictures. And then also what I, I like about this, about building the hand separately and, and not actually on the heavier armature wire, is you get a fully um, flexible hand. You can you can bend the palm and the wrist and stuff, whereas if you built it um, actually on the armature itself, um, this wire, I well, I use 18-gauge wire but because um, I like it stands up really well, but it gets a little, it's a little harder to bend. So you build the hand separately on its own. It's a little more flexible, which I like that. So here we go. Here's our finished hand. It's not too hard to do. I don't think so. I think it, I think it works out pretty well. And now let's attach it. I'm going to show you how I attach it, which is extremely easy, very easy. So the only difference is if you're going to build the hand separately like this, you just want to make the arm a little shorter than you would as if you were just, if you were going to have a complete whole arm, um, just a little bit shorter. You just want to deduct, um, you just want to deduct length for the, the hand and kind of the wrist area and you make it straight, just a straight, straight, straight line. Actually, it'd probably be better if we just straighten this all out completely. So, this is going to be, actually, I think I'm going to do it like this. So, this is going to be the wire that goes on the top, and this is going to be the wire that goes on the bottom. Like this, like a sandwich. So you're going to line it up like that. Make sure your wrist is straight. It's on there straight. You can even like start attaching it and then kind of readjust it after if, you, if you're having trouble because it's a little tricky. Um, I take a piece of 32 gauge, which is very pliable, thin floral wire to wrap it on there. Just hold it on. Take a piece of 32 gauge floral wire. Wrap it on real tight. Just wrap it all the way up to the wrist. And then you're going to wrap back. And then wrap back on itself. 
the tighter you wrap it, you know, the, then um, it will stay on there better, but then also you can have say over how skinny and how fat you want your arms and you don't have all that wire in the way. But it's 32 gauge wire, so it doesn't really take up much room anyway. Okay. Then you can take your pliers, give it a, a bend where the where the elbow is gonna be. Actually gonna cut that little slack off there. Because I really only want it to come up to the where the elbow would be on, on his arm. You don't need it to really go up any further than that. You can even take your pliers and give it a little pinch, really get that wire on there. <clears throat> but by doing like two pieces of wire, one on the top, one on the bottom, the, the hand's pretty sturdy. I mean, it feels pretty sturdy to me. So that is it. You got, he has his other little hand. I right, guys hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free. You can email me at farmhousefelts at gmail.com or you can come over and visit me on Facebook and I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. Um, also, if you like this video, you want to see other videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.